Hey, this is Ihab. In this video, I am going to show you my method that I use to identify scale and placement of certain objects in an illustration. So for example, I need to know if the length of this plane is, for instance, 20 inch or 20 meters, then if I'm blocking it in 3D, where would this area here be in relation to the full geometry? Where would this be, for instance, if this is the the very beginning, then would this be located at the 10% space from the very beginning? Or for instance, where would this merging point between this angle and this piece, where would this be? Would it be like 25% here? So the goal of this method is to get a precise idea on where the placement of certain objects are, where the placement of certain objects is, like for instance, is here, uh, is this line here or merging point, and this versus this point, almost like making like a ruler or a grid that would tell you exactly where things are in a way that you can be as precise as possible. And the other thing is, is this as big as maybe this piece, or is it as big as one of those fins, or this small wing, and all this. This way it would be a tool to reduce the amount of errors that we could be making, especially when it comes to working off of illustrations that are made in perspective. So in attempt to clarify exactly the way that I would go with this method, I am going to demonstrate the technique on both this image and this one. So I'm going to go with this one first because it has a nicely silhouetted orthographic view, meaning that I can easily see the silhouette and um, I can identify uh, pretty much all of the pieces in it. But in the meantime, also it is an orthographic view. So it would be the easiest example to look at because it has no distortion. However, in an example like this, we do have distortion and one could suggest that, oh, maybe maybe this here is located somewhere in like 20%, but in reality, it would be most likely around the 50% or maybe 48% or something like that. Uh, maybe something like this is around like 49 or maybe 50 or who knows. So I'm going to walk you through the process of Xing those points in a way that we can identify the center and then we identify the center of one of the halves and then the center of one of the halves of the halves and so on and so forth. So I hope you find this video helpful and uh, if you do have some images that you would like me to dissect in a similar way and uh, you found some struggle with it let me know send me links whatever and um, i'll be happy to give it a shot so i'm going to be using this website which has some of the most gorgeous artworks done by some top tier concept artists and these are contest winners so so much to learn from them for this demonstration i'm going to be using this as the first one because I think this is going to be the simplest and easiest example to apply the method to. And that's because it's drawn in an orthographic view. It is from the side and it has no distortion. So it's almost like as good as a blueprint. So it's intentionally made that way and it, it looks beautiful from the side. Um, but also it's much simpler to understand proportionally, I suppose, to something that is in perspective like this, for instance. right? All right, so uh, the other example that I'm going to be using, which is more complex, so this tutorial hopefully would be more beneficial than just using it on a simple example, would be this plane. So this would be a good example because it's in perspective, it's still clear, but it will be difficult or tricky to figure out exactly the proportions because it's in perspective. But... Um, this is still a really good example to go with. If you look at some of the other pieces, like uh, something like this, this would be m more tricky than the second example. There are some examples that I can go through here, uh, like this, for instance, here. It's kind of 
slightly confusing because of the shape of it and also it's a little tricky because of the perspective but it's still understandable there's always a guessing game that is dependent on the design itself but that's the beautiful thing about these artworks uh, is that some of them have different perspectives the other thing that i would strongly recommend is that you would look up the name of the artists who made these pieces and then look their art station portfolio look it up and you might be able to find more images so i believe that these are the renders the 2d renders that they've created maybe some of them are in two and 3d uh, these are the ones that won the contests but nonetheless you might find on their uh, website all right so let's get to it the uh, first thing i'm gonna do is turn this into a non-background so it wouldn't annoy me if i want to do any adjustment to it the second thing i'm gonna create a new layer and if this is an image that is too colorful for you and you want to try to kind of you go and try to paint on top of it with bright green sometimes it's you, you can see it's you would you'd be very distracted I would go to the magic wand shortcut W. I would go to this type of magic wand. The name of it is quick selection tool. And then based on where you paint, it's going to select the similar pixels. It's going to make a selection out of it. And here too. And then delete. Uh, I don't care really if I miss some things here or there. The most important part is making sure that I have the silhouette um, and whatever necessary details here to be available. So this is the first thing we're going to do. Uh, the second one is, as you can see, it's kind of like uh, all over, like overall it's pretty bright. So what I'm going to do is create a new layer. If you click and hold control, and then you click the new layer, it's actually going to create the new layer below. And that's what I need. By default, it creates that layer above, which is kind of annoying because oftentimes you want it to be lower for backgrounds and things like that. So here is a, that's the first trick to mention about Photoshop here, um, control and then new layer. And then I'm going to go and hit D on the keyboard to default the black and white colors. And then alt and backspace to fill it with black so now it's kind of easier to see the other thing that i might consider doing is select that layer and hit Control i inverting the colors oftentimes gives you a kind of a more calm color palette or you know in the case of having of course a bright color so i think this would work much more easily for me to visualize it and paint over it now if i were to go and paint with the green that i started with uh, hit b so it's going to be a little easier to to work with uh, nonetheless you can just go and um, invert it to the original colors also you can go Control l to the levels and you can just change the levels if that helps so it doesn't really matter how we modify it as long as we don't go and hit control T and sort of like distort it because then it defies the purpose. Otherwise, any visual editing to it, uh, such as colors and whatsoever, it's all good. So I'm going to go here into this new layer. And uh, what I'm going to do is, so the first thing that I need to do is to identify really what are the... Um, what is the box that I want to fit this ship in? And by the way, I'm going to hit caps lock. So you can see the cursor of my mouse is now an X instead of a circle. So it's much easier to detect. So I'm going to click with the left mouse button like a painting, right? So left mouse button, and then I click and hold shift after I click the left mouse button. So it would go and lock it vertically. Now here I would do the same. I can either start from here. If this is something that is kind of like an extra, I can start from here. Or if I consider this, so in some cases, for instance, you get an image with like maybe some effects coming out of the thrusters and whatsoever. So don't let that 
uh, distract you. So for this one, this should be good. So I'm going to include it. So uh, I'm going to go from here on the left side, click with the left mouse button. Uh, by the way, the reason I prefer the mouse is because if you're using a tablet, because of the pressure sensitive nature of the pen, it may give you things like, for instance, right? So if you go here and then you go here, you have this kind of tapering that happens. But with the mouse, it's, it's just going to be the same, consistent. So click with left mouse button and then click and hold shift and then drag it all the way. I don't really care where it ends. Control zero to center things. And I can actually hit uh, F. So the same thing here, left mouse button, click and hold shift and then go all the way. And now from here, I can pick any point where I would go down and that should be it. Okay, so I'm gonna go E for eraser. Okay, so this is the box that I can contain this airship in. Now I would go and I want to identify the center. So this is the, the after I identify the box, I would have to identify where the center is. So go from one corner to another. And in this case, I could go and create a new layer, Control Shift N. And go here and then I can change the color so I would go here and here here and here so this is my center if I click and hold with the left mouse button and click and hold shift so this is my center so that tells me now that this here 50% and therefore if I'm trying to identify certain areas let's say for instance I want to identify scale of this piece these pipes then in that case I would need to find out exactly you know how long it is how far it's going forward uh, or backwards whatever uh, or the other thing I might want to uh, identify with this method of using the X would be the placement. So for instance, I want to know what is this here? Is that like the 30% mark, that 10% mark whatsoever? And I want to know also uh, about this one too, right? So in my mind, I'll just kind of target these points. So I'm just going to circle them. So let's say my target here is to identify the placement of this and that, okay? So now I'm gonna go and you can think about it like this. And then eventually I would be able to identify the center here. And uh, you can see even like with eyeballing now, the worst case you could be off with maybe 5%, I suppose, to 20%. So even eyeballing at this point, I could say this is here the center. And therefore, I would say maybe this here is the center. So this would be, so this would be here. So this would be here, also the center. So eventually, you would have as precise of a result as possible. So that is an example on something that is straightforward, orthographic, and really simple to dissect. So now I'm gonna go into a perspective one that is more tricky, and I'm gonna be using the same method.